On the morning of June 10th, the SPC outlined a rare moderate risk for severe weather across Michigan and Ohio. The atmosphere across much of Ohio was conducive for severe thunderstorms producing damaging winds growing out of the remnants of tropical storm Cristobal. Individual storm cells would pose a low risk for tornadoes as they developed along the Ohio-Indiana border before they would grow and congeal into a heavy squall line. Tornadoes were still possible along with widespread damaging wind as the system progressed across Ohio. My dad and I decided on an impromptu chase targeting western Ohio to catch the initial supercell threat and follow the storms back east as they developed into an MCS. Winds were howling across Ohio ahead of storm development. We were heading west on Highway 30 toward Lima, where we would intercept the fast-moving storms that were already developing. We got a late start, so we hurried to reach the storms while there was still supercell potential. The storms forming in southwest Ohio showed signs of rotation. One storm northwest of Dayton became a developed supercell. Around 4.45 p.m., storm chasers reported a weak dust whirl beneath the rotating storm near Sydney. This was either a small tornado or what chasers refer to as a gustnado, a transient whirl that spins up from a storm's strong outflow winds. At this time, we were turning south near Lima to get in front of the supercell. It was moving fast and other cells were popping up around it, making me worried that they would congeal into a disorganized mess. broke through the rain to face the storm just outside Waynesfield. The remnants of a rotating wall cloud hovered to our west. There was slight visible rotation, but the storm was becoming linear and the cyclone was unwinding. From deep within the storm came a green glow, the result of yellow sunlight combined with the storm's blue tint. it for about three minutes before we were overtaken by a heavy downdraft undercutting the storm. Yep. When it was a little safer to drive, we started our vain attempt to catch back up with it. We passed through Waynesfield just after the storm raged through. The 
The storms were gathering together as expected and blazing across the Ohio farmland, easily outpacing us. We tagged along north and east after them as visible lightning crackled on the horizon. We finally got on Highway 30 heading east to break through the storm and get back in front of it. Ohio was facing a massive severe thunderstorm event known as the derecho, an especially intense form of MCS or squall line storm. The line can stretch for dozens to hundreds of miles and can sustain itself for hours on end. Damaging winds, torrential rainfall, and occasional tornadoes are all hazards. A thunderstorm line is classified as a derecho after it travels more than 250 miles and produces sustained winds of 60 miles per hour or greater. As we drew closer to the core of the storm, the lightning started to become visible, along with the aftermath of the derecho's high winds. As we passed Mansfield, we broke out into clear air on the other side, behind the shelf cloud. We had passed through a weaker segment of the line. An intense segment to our south was starting to bow forward. When we gained some distance on the storm, we turned off the highway and searched for a vantage point to watch it approach from the southwest. An area of short-lived rotation was forming, with the full force of the derecho trailing right behind it. storm spotter who came out to keep an eye on things after a few tornado warnings were issued down the line. It's already coming over the hill. The wind kicked up and the eerie turquoise color returned. After just a few minutes, we were overtaken again.
We got back on the highway and stopped in Wooster for gas and food. The line bowed again slightly and another segment of the storm came surging toward us. In this segment, the lightning activity increased dramatically, so we grabbed some McDonald's and let it come crashing around us. The storm started to move out and left behind a gorgeous double rainbow in an orange sky. Lightning was still flashing, so we made a break for the farmland just outside of town for a vantage point. We found a perfect spot, but I had to keep the cameras in the car until the rain let up. The rain finally stopped and left us beneath a fiery pastel sky filled with mamatis and occasionally crackling with lightning while dominated by a vibrant double rainbow. I made the call to hang behind the storm and take in the sights as it departed on the eastern horizon. Also being that this was such an incredible scene, it would only make sense that some of my pictures were out of focus without me noticing. Impressive webs of anvil lightning occurring off camera had me anxious to capture at least one as the light faded, I kept the cameras pointed southeast, where the strikes were the closest, and waited. serial derecho of June 10th, 2020 caused damage and power outages from eastern Illinois to western New York. At least two small tornadoes were recorded in Ohio. The storm system reached western Pennsylvania after sunset and produced an impressive light show that I was unable to see. Still, it was a rewarding event during my agonizingly slow storm season. But it wouldn't be a storm chase without a little chagrin, now would it? As the derecho crossed into Pennsylvania, a tiny little kink in the line formed and became an EF2 tornado that moved through Beaver Falls, which is about a half hour from where I live. Thankfully, there are no injuries, except my pride. I'll try to take some comfort in the fact that it was at night, buried in rain, and chasing in that area is impossible anyways. <laughs> 